Hello all, this is Mel again, the Head of Quality for TLA and CPD from South Thames Colleges Group, here with another video of a tool that you can use to teach from home. Um, this is Discord. Now, some of you might have heard about Discord, some of you have asked about Discord, and so this is what we're looking at today. Um, Discord was primarily set up and used for gaming, um, so any of you that game might already have um, Discord channels and servers set up. A lot of your students may already be using Discord. Um, I started having a look at it and actually found a blog from Discord themselves um, with a guide on how to use Discord for your classroom. And um, I read through it and this gave me so much useful information. Um, that I would recommend you all visit this link which we will try and put in the description um, and it sets you up if you click there rather than going through the normal setup it does you a very um, quick quick sign in and gives you an automatically pre-organized classroom space so that's exactly what I did um, so here you're in my classroom and we've got it sets up these various different channels now what discord is used for is essentially chatting um, so you can text chat as in typing you can voice chat and you can live stream because the idea is that people live stream themselves playing games and people watch them and ask questions or they have these chat channels that they're talking to whilst they're playing a game these are the preset, um, pre-organized different channels that it um, makes. So some of these are, are text chats and some of these are um, voice chats, so lectures. So where you see the little hashtag there, that means it's a, it's a, a text chat. And where you see the, the um, little um, speaker there, that's a voice chat. What I'm going to do now is just show you um, how you can use these and then a bit later on I'm going to try doing a text chat and a, a live stream with um, Jamie. So um, what I found is each of these is sort of set up for different things so students you can change these okay so if you wanted to agree the office hours um, that students can do if you wanted to change any of these so for example homework questions is a really good one the students can come in and ask the questions and it's all based on invites so it, you have to invite um, your learners and it creates a little link and you can send it to um, people um, so your students for example you can send them an email with that link and it'll invite them into these channels so how you could do this if you wanted you could either set it up for a course and have different people you can assign different people as professors so teachers um, and or you could have uh, different chats for different modules so if I just show you here it's got like management 303 I'm gonna edit that channel and I'm gonna change it to anatomy and physiology and then I could write a description in there um, you can restrict how many messages so you can actually set up different things you can set up permissions um, it does tell you to save change as well which I really like um, so you can um, set up who the, the teachers are um, you can only give certain permissions to um, yourself or other teachers to create invites um, we have had feedback that the um, the Moodle chats aren't that uh, great because students when they come and join in they can't see the chat that's just before them whereas with this you can um, and you students can attach files and things here so they can um, you can also delete messages um, if students are, are using it in a way you don't like so if I write something here it then pops up and you get a you get a sort of layered discussion so um, that's how it works again I'm new to this but it seems to be really really useful for um, text chat um, I am going to have a go and hopefully the next stage of this video, um, when it's edited together, we'll have a, a um, verbal 
chat discussion. Um, this blog is incredibly useful and it talks you through all the different guiders much, much better than me. So do go to this blog. If you want to know how to share your screen, the resources within Discord are really, really helpful and explains to you how to go live. Um, what I will do as well to all the teachers, I'm going to set up a channel within my classroom for you to come and chat to us because not many people are using the isolation room chat that we set up on Moodle. So if you want to come into Discord and have a little play, um, then you can chat to me and Jamie, hopefully, on one of these channels. Um, so yeah, just have a go. It seems to be relatively useful. Um, the only one thing I would advise is you can have private one-to-one -one discussions on Discord and I would just avoid that with the students. I would just ask them to not um, private message you and just use these invite-only channels. But as you see, you know, Discord have set up all of this guidance for teachers because so many people are using it and what they've also done is they've changed the go live limit from 10 to 50 people so it used to be you could only go live and, and, and um, share your screen to, to 10 people whereas now they've changed it to 50 because of the COVID-19 um, crisis and I think it just shows that they are being um, thoughtful and that a lot of people are using this to teach so I'm, I'm going to um, go and have a go with Jamie having a, a voice chat and hopefully that will be the next section of this video. Okay, so this is the second section of the video where I'm going to show you how to do voice chats and to stream, to live stream your screen. Um, this took a little bit of time for me and Jamie to figure out and it turns out you can voice chat and you can text chat by just using Discord in... Um, your Google Chrome or your um, online basically. If you want to be able to live stream you need to download the Discord app to your computer. So that's what I've done. I've downloaded the Discord app to my computer um, and what happens is when you go into a voice channel, so I've gone into and um, created this one example voice chat, you do need to make sure that everyone has the right permissions. So you create an invite by doing this and you can copy this link and send it in an email. So that's what I've done, I've sent that to Jamie. But in the permissions, you can set people up. So I'm the professor um, and I've made sure I have the various um, permissions. So I can connect, I can speak, I can go live, that sort of thing. Um, then um, I can set Jamie up as the teacher's aide and I've made sure that he can connect and speak and everything like that. And what you can do is set permissions with the learners, whether you want them to be able to speak back or you just want them to be able to listen. And there's various different um, aspects that you can play with. Um, so it does take a little bit of trial and error. Okay, so we're gonna look at it from my um, side of the screen now. Um, you've seen some of the mails. I've received the invites, so this is how I'll access um, Discord from an invite. This is sent from, from Mel. I click on the invite. It will prompt me through the browser to accept the invite here. I then have to open Discord, which is a desktop app. Okay, so that's going to load up. And now I'm in. So hopefully Mel can hear me. Okay, so now that Jamie's in my voice chat and you can see that he's, he's live here by this little... Um, list here so you can see there's me and Jamie in the example voice chat it gives me this option to go live so I'm gonna click on that this is going to allow me to stream and um, whatever I want to show Jamie so you can see here it gives you an option and it's basically all the different windows that I've got open on my computer so I'm not going to show him my Amazon shopping list and I'm not going to show him the list of uh -oh. BTEC <laughs> the BTEC SVs at uh, lead, lead IVs unless he wants me to but what I'm gonna no, click no, on here is the um, PowerPoint that I want to show him and it's got the title there so I'm going to click on that. It then tells me what I'm streaming so it's just going to show um, the PowerPoint that I am um, wanting him to see. So this is a benefit over Zoom and Skype because they show everything that's going on live in your on your computer so if you get an email pop up or if you get notifications pop up 
that appears on your Skype or your Zoom. Whereas the benefit with this, it's just going to stream the application that I want Jamie to see. So I'm going to click go live. It's now showing as an option. There we go. So I'm going to go live again. Okay, and so you can see from um, this top right corner here, this is Mel's server. Um, I'm going to click on that. When I want to open it up, it has um, the join stream option here. So as soon as I hit this, Mel's PowerPoint should start loading. And there it is. And so Jamie can now see my PowerPoint and I can talk through the PowerPoint. We have discovered that it doesn't show him if I do go into presenter view for some reason. So you would have to sort of work through it like this, but I can, um, I can sort of minimize these if I want to and um, just sort of play with the screen so Jamie sees this. So I'm gonna tell him his objectives for the day and I might go through the activities or the terminology. Cool. So that's uh, live streaming. So I'm just going to end it now. Um, and it, it's taking it away. Sometimes um, you can be streaming and other people can pop in um, and other people can join you later. So if you sort of said to the students, I'm going to be online from this time to this time and they're a little bit late, they can still jump in. They don't have to be there right at the start. And this is what it looks like with the different channels. So um, the, some of these different chat channels, I'm in this welcome one. Um, so I'm just going to type in here and you can see in real time that Jamie is able to chat back to me, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully I can spell. There you go. <laughs> and this is how it, how it would look. And obviously everyone on there, um, it would it sort of appear. And we're still in the voice chat and the type chat. But if you didn't want to be in the voice chat, um, we can both drop out of that if we want to. Or I can mute my microphone like that. So now Jamie can't hear me. Um, but I can hear Jamie typing. Um, and then I can open. So again, if I want to, um, I could deafen Jamie um, or deafen myself. Um, so these different tools allow me to do that. Okay, so I think that's everything with Discord. Um, so just have a play, give it a go. Um, I will send out the link to this particular um, chat room that Jamie and I are in right now so you can have um, a little chat with us and see how you find it. So thank you very much Jamie and thank you everyone. I'm going to end this stream and I'm going to end the video um, and I hope you've all found that useful. Discord seems to be pretty useful for um, voice chats and um, uh, online chat rooms which could be quite nice for the learners interacting and helping each other as well you can delete things you can ban people and block people if they're misbehaving um, but again it's very much just about trial and error see what works for you um, you may have a lot of learners who are already on discord and um, one of the things you may find is that people have gamer tags or gamer names and so they might you might send them an invite and they might come and join your discord under their gamer name so you might just want to ask them to clarify who they are um, but it is invite only so only people that get the invite that you've sent will be allowed to join the various chat rooms i hope that's been useful and enjoy the rest of your day